The NASCAR Xfinity Series has all the drama. Ty Dillon is headed back to the NASCAR Cup Series in 2025, plus an update on where Cup Series silly season currently stands. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. If you watched the video on Friday, you saw my power flicker, the TV went out, and it seemed like it was okay. It wasn't. After the video ended, power went out and we were in the dark for the next 36 hours. Thankfully, had a generator to power kind of the essentials downstairs, able to plug the modem and the router in and get the internet up and running, which was actually super beneficial. If not, probably would have gone absolutely mad. However, I did look up how much a Generac is, and guess what? Breakcar will be making an investment into a Generac um, probably in the springtime <laughs> to have that on hand in case a situation like this ever arises again. They're not as expensive as I thought they were, so yeah, we're going to be getting a full house generator here after the new garage gets built. But that's a story for a different day. Obviously, people in Western Carolina had it much worse than we did here. Obviously, we've got hurricane force winds, gale force winds. You live in an old neighborhood, big trees, big branches, they fall hard, hit power lines and knocks your power out for, you know, 36 hours. Not ideal. Thankfully, the generator ran all the essentials. Obviously, people in Western Carolina, um, Tennessee, Florida have it much worse than we did. Hopefully, all of those people get through this rebuild everything like that uh really really bummed to see some of the photos out of Asheville and the surrounding area i-40 gone uh as a person that's making a trip to charlotte in a couple weeks really big bummer to see some of those places get impacted as hard as they did so hopefully everybody pulls through there getting into the racing that we had this weekend though the nascar xfinity series at Kansas. TNT use has a slogan, we know drama. Well, it turns out the Xfinity series knows drama because there was drama by the boatloads on Saturday. And it seemed like everybody was just upset with one another. And it's the first race of the Xfinity series uh, playoffs. You have guys running into each other, guys spinning each other out, guys flipping each other off, yelling at each other post-race, putting each other into the wall. And all that to see Eric Amarola go to victory lane. And on the front stretch in his post-race interview, he had a very funny miss speak essentially when he said quote i have a good th a good friend that's ran through me yo chill eric wait you don't have to be saying that stuff out in public like that and he very quickly cleared it up uh and said that he has a friend that's been going through a lot there so hopefully his friends okay he was there uh in kansas to celebrate with eric but just in the moment it's like hey, well, nascom is gonna be all over that one eric amarola wins the race cole custer comes in second cole custer was not happy whatsoever with <sighs> daddy neckbeard uh chandler smith over there and went down to tell chandler smith after the race that he wasn't happy with him because he felt that chandler put him into the wall when he's trying to pass him on the outside he he probably did and chandler's a guy that doesn't like to get past he doesn't actually like to race if everything worked out perfectly for chandler he would just be driving around by himself and get to collect every trophy and every uh checkered flag but that's not how big time auto racing works so he kind of puts custer into the wall custer goes down after the you know race he's yelling at him basically telling him that he didn't like what he saw or what he did to him and then he talks to tv afterwards and he's like chandler's going to pay for his consequences uh, chandler's going to have consequences to pay for his actions is what he meant to say there but he said he, chandler's going to pay for his consequences and people get fired up right not everybody's going to be as smooth on the microphone as tony stewart is uh, after he gets angry so cole maybe that's the one thing he needs to work on other than that solid year for him would have been the first time he's ever won back-to-back -back race in the Xfinity series which actually was kind of surprising ultimately did not end up happening and instead uh Eric Amarola wins Cole Custer second Chandler Smith in third and uh Connor Zilich in his second ever NASCAR Xfinity series start goes back to back with a top five finish uh that's two JRM drivers this year that have made uh Two starts in the Xfinity Series with two top five finishes back to back. He and Carson Quapple did. So shout out to both of those guys. Uh, hopefully, Jerem kind of teased a Carson Quapple. Um, not teased. They posted a Carson Quapple teaser on Saturday before the Xfinity Series race. So hopefully that means that there might be an announcement coming. It was him in a in a hunting blind with a bow. So maybe there wasn't string on the bow, <laughs> as some people pointed out. Regardless. If he gets Bass Pro Shop sponsorship, that would be absolutely massive for him to get a full-time ride in the Xfinity Series next year with JRM, a ride that he absolutely deserves. Then you look down at Austin Hill and Riley Herbs. Austin Hill spun out Riley Herbs coming to the stage in, not on purpose. Riley kind of got sideways. The 21 was there and just kind of gave him that finishing move there and sent him off into the grass in the infield. Austin was really apologetic on the radio. After the race, he went down to Riley. Riley said, what was that? And Austin said, I messed up. That was my bad. Did not mean to hit you. Didn't want to wreck you. And that's maturity. That's growth from Austin Hill. We love to see that. We love to see people own up to their actions. We love to see people uh, become self-aware and be like, hey, admit fault when it is. And maybe Austin Hill's finally turned the corner. I say that. He'll probably go to the Rove one, absolutely junk somebody. But in the moment right now, 
this is what we've been looking for from Austin Hill. It only took him, how old is he, 32, 42, somewhere in that range, to finally get to this point. But that's growth. It's maturity. We're happy to see it. Then we also had cameras catch Sammy Smith go down and ask AJ Allmendinger what the hell was that for at the beginning of the race when Allmendinger hit him down the backstretch, uh, gave him a bunch of damage, and that ultimately caused him to spin out um, a few laps later. Sammy Smith, that is. And Sammy went down to say something to him, and AJ looked like he was just not having any of it. And now I love AJ Allmendinger. I'm not exact. My friend is the leader of the AJ Allmendinger fan club, but I, I like to see AJ do well. In this situation, AJ's got to be like, yeah, man, I, I messed up. Like, my bad. But he was very dismissive of Sammy Smith. And eh, whatever. I mean, neither of them are going to win a championship more than likely. But for for <laughs> the drama, they had plenty of it on Saturday. Now, the Xfinity Series heads off to Talladega next weekend and then to the Roval. So if things weren't already crazy enough, they get a super speedway race. And then they're going to get the Roval, which AJ Allmendinger or Shane Van Gisbergen will more than likely win. Uh, for both of those guys, though, uh, it should be a pretty good show. So if you want to go to the extended series race, I would highly recommend it because I would assume both of those guys are going to put on a clinic there. AJ Allmendinger's won a race at the Roval for the last five consecutive years. I believe he's uh, won four in a row in the extended series, and then he won the cup race last year. So yeah, would really like to see uh, him continue his streak on because it's bananas at this point. All right, moving into the announcement that was made on Saturday. That came from Cog Racing, where they announced that Daniel Hemrick will not return to the number 31 car in 2025. Instead, Ty Dillon will take over that ride, and it will be renumbered from the 31 to the number 10 to match their numbers in the Xfinity Series, where they have 10, 11, and 16. Ty Dillon joins the team after making select starts for Cog Racing. He's always kind of flirted with Cog, but they've never been able to seal the deal. And now they're finally decided to get together and see how this relationship is going to go. Like two friends that are like, should we date? Should we? not date i don't know it might ruin our relationship and then they date and guess what it never works out that well or it does in some situations and they're happily married with four kids and honestly the four kids part sounds terrible but the rest of it might be nice i wouldn't know so for ty dillon he goes over there he's made 244 starts in his nascar cup series career he has seven top 10 finishes in those 244 starts daniel hemrick has made 71 starts in his nascar cup series career he has seven top tens uh in his career so for the math whizzes at home yeah, that's about not not nearly four times as many starts for Ty Dillon, but a substantial amount of starts more than Daniel Hemrick. And he has the same number of top tens. So you can argue that Ty Dillon hasn't been in the best equipment, right? He was at Germain for a long time. Uh, he made starts with Gaunt Brothers and uh, various other teams, Colleg, uh, RCR at times, Beard Motorsport. Like he's been around. He's been around. Seven top tens is just bad. However, Ty Dillon is a guy that will bring the car home. He's the Andy Dalton of NASCAR drivers. He's not going to win you a championship. He's probably not going to take you to the playoffs. He probably won't ever win you more than eight games for the most part now. But he's a consistent guy. He makes people feel good, and he gives you a little bit of hope. And that's all people want in life is a little bit of hope. Now, he's better than Bryce Young, and maybe Ty Dillon is Bryce Young. It remains to be seen how he plans out at, pans out at college. But yeah. Ty Dillon this year in the truck series, of course, was released from his contract with, uh, what, five races to go or whatever it is in the truck series season. Up to that point, he had two top 10 finishes. Dawson Sutton, the 18-year-old, hops in the truck in his third ever NASCAR truck series start on Friday night at Kansas and gets a top five. So, yeah, use a little bit of strategy, but Ty Dillon certainly never put the truck in position to do that either. Uh, so, yeah. Maybe Ty is the problem. I don't know, but he's getting a full season in the college uh, cup series car next year. Now he might just be a placeholder for a Christian Eck is or a Daniel die or somebody like that to move up in a year or two. Uh, but for now, we'll see what he can do next season in the cup series. Now, an update on where NASCAR Cup Series Silly Season currently stands. Obviously, the 31, now the 10 car at Colleg, is off the board, which leaves us with basically three main rides that are still out there. And they're all three rides. One of them has been announced as being an actual ride. The other one we know is going to happen, hasn't been announced. And the other one, we have a good feeling it's going to happen. So start off with the ride that actually has been announced, that at Front Row Motorsports, where they acquired a third charter. They will have a third car next season. Zane Smith has been the name that we keep hearing around that car. I expect Zane Smith to end up in that uh, third car over at Front Row Motorsports. Obviously, uh, it's dependent on sponsorship. Chandler Smith's name has been mentioned there as well. Chandler Smith does not have the money to bring a substantial budget from what I've heard to this ride. Zane Smith is, in my opinion, a better talent than what Chandler Smith is right now. I get it. Chandler has Xfinity Series wins. But in terms of cup readiness, I do think that Zane Smith is the guy over at uh, Front Row. 
He has a history of front row, won a truck series championship for them, won a bunch of races for them, made cup starts for them uh, in 2023. He is a guy. Yes, now there has been talk about Ford uh, not being happy with the way that he left and jumped ship to track house last year, but it's a cup ride and adults need to be adults here and make a good business decision. And Zane Smith is the guy to put in that car. Still expect him to end up there as well. So does Bob Hockris. So does uh, Jordan Bianchi. So before people are like, where does this front come from? We've all heard the same thing. On to the third car over at 2311 Racing. Now, 2311 Racing hasn't announced that they've acquired a charter. They haven't announced that they're going to have a third car. They are hiring people for a third car, this unannounced third car. And everything that we've been hearing up to this point is that it's going to be Riley Herbst. It's going to be Riley Herbst with help from his family who helped purchase that charter. We heard it again this week that his family was part of the um, purchasing party for that charter. And that you know monster will move over as a sponsor with him from the extended series to the cup series on that b2b deal that they have with his family's line of uh, gas station convenience stores out in uh, the western part of the united states terribles so fully expect riley herbs to end up at 2311 racing yeah he said the other this past week uh, in his media availability for the playoffs that he is uncertain of what his 2025 plans are that he's not that confident in them Listen, that's just because the 2311 situation is kind of all up in the air right now. Uh, but once they figure that out, fully expect them to announce this you know, third charter with Riley Herbst for the 2025 season. Do not think that's going to change. Yes, we would all like to see Corey Heim up in that position. Not going to happen for next season, at least. And of course, they signed Bubba Wallace to an extension through the 2026 season. Uh, so if Corey Heim is going to get to the Cup Series. It's not going to be with JGR. 2311 Racing's got their guys for... The next two years, it looks like eh, he's going to have to figure something out there. Toyota's going to have to figure out something for him. And then there is the third RFK car, the mysterious third RFK car that has popped up out of nowhere because they have so much sponsorship for next year. They need a third car to put that sponsor on, that being Kroger. That's a massive get for that RFK team. And it still sounds like they will have a third car next year. What number is that? Is it the 60, the 97? Who knows? At this point, would love to see the 97 come back. Run the 26, bring back Johnny Benson and... Uh, um, Jamie McMurray's number. Let's get the 26 back out here. Uh, but for now, it sounds like it's going to be Ryan Priest. That's a name that keeps coming up. Bob Pockers has mentioned it. Jordan Bianchi's mentioned it. Adam Stern's mentioned it. Uh, my ties within the Ford camp aren't that strong, so I'm going to go off what they say right there. And it sounds like it'll be Ryan Priest. RFK believes that Ryan Priest has not been able to show his full potential in the Cup Series. I know that's probably a debatable topic because some people would argue that he has been absolutely outran by his teammates at SHR the last two seasons, and they're not wrong there. He has performed okay in the last few weeks, but for Ryan Priest, this is, would very much be a put up or shut up type of deal over at RFK. Uh, it sounds like that deal is going to happen, likely going to be a charter lease from Rickway Racing for the first year and kind of see where things stand based off of what everybody has heard. So for now, Ryan Priest, third RFK car, Brad said a couple weeks ago, they're still probably about a month out from announcing anything. That month is quickly coming around. Uh, so we'll see, you know, if they announce anything Charlotte week, that would make some sense to announce it or, you know, a couple weeks after that. But for RFK, Landing Kroger is a massive, massive get. All right. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Xfinity series and everything that happened on Saturday with them, the Ty Dillon signing over at College Racing and Cup Series Silly Season, where it's currently standing. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.